what's going on, people? Now you can see that like, the, the new episode of uh, Ask Luke, I have the, the thinkers' fingers going on here. Um, but check this out. We, I, I sent out an email the other day on, um, just on, uh, in our newsletter, and um, it was about like statistics of what men and women struggle with the most and when it comes to you know, transformation and losing weight and, and uh, feeling better, getting more confident. And men and women were somewhat uh, different in those statistics. But, you know, number one for women when it came to, you know, I would say like slowing them down or stopping them from getting results was emotional eating. Or should I say what, what women need most help with uh, when it comes to getting results was emotional eating. And um, this is something we've talked about a lot, right? This is a huge subject matter. And the reason why I talk about it is because you know, there's this tendency kind of uh, in, in, in fitness or in, in diet and health, I would say that, you know, hey, just do this. Here, here's this new diet. Here's this, um, this new exercise program, you know, that's better and more optimal for losing fat and getting leaner and doing this and that. Um, and, it's, and it's rarely ever the solution. I mean, it, you know, and I'll talk about surface solutions uh, in a little bit because, it's, you know, you get the new diet, and then you work on it, but you can't be consistent, right? So, you, you know, you join the gym, you do a training program, or you do something at home, and it works somewhat, but then you can't stay consistent on it, right? And lifestyle changes, whether it's sleep, reducing your stress levels, it never stays consistent. So with that said, you know, it always runs back to uh, an emotional eating. So think about, you know, kind of like what the, the tendency is where you're stressed out, something happens, right? you eat and because because the stress response kind of like make, makes you whether it's anger fear uh you know resentment rejection embarrassment whatever it may be and then you you know overindulge and feel really bad about yourself for overindulging and then kind of repeat and that the process repeats itself right so there's there's this emotional trigger that will usually start it off and you know with with women what tends to happen is you know always doing for others so you know so many responsibilities for with ki with kids family work um, and everything in between and givers that at the end there's very little left you know to to help yourself and and I completely understand I mean that's it's, it's it's tough it's very very tough and you know my goal today is to kind of give you some tools to help you first off identify so this is one of the main things is like identify what is going on rather than going like oh i'm just hungry yeah. right because maybe you're going you know through, through throughout your day and then you smell you know a, a, a cinnamon or something like that and you're like oh i'm hungry right because the smell triggers something that makes you feel good right maybe you were stressed that morning so bam all of a sudden you start feeling hungry because you're connecting like stress to hunger and then that's the cycle that repeats itself so Here's a 12-step process. I mean, this is actually something that, uh, you know, we're, we're very high on the precision nutrition system. Our, our, all our coaches use it or certified. So this is something that, that's uh, really helped, um, you know, talking to clients about every single time that, like, for instance, they get hungry, that they first analyze and, and, and see what's going on. So, you know, I also talked about the, the, the habit loop before, where there's a cue, then there's an action and a reward to start seeing what the cue is for the hunger, right? So first of all, what we do is we assume that some thought or belief or emotion is driving the urge. So it's not actually hunger, right? Because you're, the, the way that we're programmed is kind of like, oh, I feel hungry. It must be hunger. I'm, I, I got to go eat, right? Because we're so programmed that it doesn't become this conscious thought where we start thinking about it. So first thing is assume that it's a thought and belief or emotion that's actually driving the urge for you to eat something, right? Step number two is, Look for where your emotions are on your body, so scan, right? What this does is it actually makes you stop and think about what's going on and see where you're feeling it, right? It's like a pause. It's like stepping out of yourself and like seeing what's going on with the situation, right? And then step number three is observe only and don't analyze. Now, I say this because everybody, I mean, not, not just women, but everybody is like, we tend to analyze. Oh, it's this, it's that. I'm feeling like this because of this. Oh, I shouldn't be doing this, right? So, right? Wait, don't explain the things with your immediate response, right? So it just means, like, back off for a second, 
30, 60 seconds. Like, because the tendency is that you're, you're so programmed in how you think about certain things that if you make snap like judgments and assessments, there'll usually be something that's like just programmed. It, it, it may not be true, it's just programmed. It's just how you've always done things and thought things based on those emotions, right? Remember that emotions can feel like hunger. That was like one of the main things that we said here, right? It's like to stop and say like, hey, is this me being hungry? Or is this me just being angry and pissed off because of something at work or something at home or a conversation that I had, right? So remember that. Don't should yourself and rush the judgment to feeling. So, you know, here's the thing, right? It's the same thing as when you eat something bad. Oh, I shouldn't have done that, right? I shouldn't be thinking this. This is not right. Or I should be doing this, right? That's, that's a big problem, shouldn't, shouldn'ts. We're arguing with reality. So don't argue with reality and judge to, uh, you know, to a, a feeling. So then think about, it. is this a threat to your identity, right? So what you're thinking, does it kind of like counter your belief systems or values, or, okay. right? So see how now we're analyzing the thought process and the feelings before we actually eat something versus going, you know, versus just saying, hey, uh, you know, instead of eating a Cinnabon, you should be having some cottage cheese with some strawberries, right? Because those are surface solutions, okay, which we're going to get to in a second. All right, why is it important? So ask yourself and see what the body's response is, right? Why is that important? And what I'm talking about is, like, the values and identities that we talked about before, right? Because now you're starting to ask yourself, like, hey, why is it important, like, these values that may be going against how I'm feeling when I'm thinking about food, okay? Give yourself a few minutes to experience whatever emotions you're feeling. See how now we've just separated ourselves, this whole process of like, hey, I feel hungry. Let me assess what, what's going on. Is it, is it actually hunger or is it my emotions? And like just giving ourselves space. What I like to call this is like stepping outside of the problem, right? It's, it's why I love meditation because instead of being emotional in the issue, it's taking a step and then looking at it from the outside. So it's almost like if you were, you know, really consciously aware and, and logical, what would you say to a friend that may be going through the same thing, right? Because you're not in the problem with them, possibly. So you, you're almost advising them. Like, think about it like it's, you know, that you're observing like a scientist with the clipboard, in a sense, right? So you take, give yourself a few minutes and then work backwards in the chain um, for more clues. So. What were you doing before you felt this? Who was with you? Like, what were you thinking? See, now you're going like, is it a person that triggers you? Hey, we know that socially we're very connected to this. Okay, I'm going out with friends, and it's like then they're drinking. I really don't want to based on my goals, but now I'm being like, made to feel like, oh, why are you not drinking? Why is this? Why is it that? Right? You're being socially pushed out, which is very... I would say, you know, rejection is one huge form of not only fear, but, but stress. So, you know, who were you with? You know, was it in the morning, was it in the afternoon? What, you know, just basically you're analyzing all these different things. Do you always stress at the same time and emotionally? Is it in the evening after a long day? You come home, make food for the kids, and like you just want to relax, right? But you're so stressed out from everything that then you end up, you know, snacking, right? So this, is, this analysis is what makes, uh, I would say, things successful. Take 10 breaths, fully exhale, so at least five seconds, right? Inhale, like exhale out through the mouth, inhale through the nose, right? It gets us out of the fight or flight into rest and digest, more calm and collected, right? That's huge. Taking 10 breaths, and then notice if your hunger has changed. What you'll notice that majority of the time when you go through this process, right, you'll, you'll be like, I'm not hungry anymore. Right? Because, like I said, you kind of disconnect that emotion to the, to the, um, to the feeling of hunger. Okay? So, like, this is a great process to go through. Um, like, even if you just add, like, it's a 12-step process, but even if you just add certain things uh, that we talked about, right, to first just stop and say, like, hey, am I really hungry? Right? And, you know, what is the feeling that you're having and why you're having it and things like that. That will tr uh, help you tremendously because... All of the emotional eating that's happening, there's usually cues that drive it. And the, the first step is awareness. So if we can become aware of that, right? Because the number one problem is the complicated relationship with food. Number two, I wanted to touch on this is consistency, right? With diet, exercise, and lifestyle. And, you know, as much as I would love to say, like, you know, here at Vigor, 
like I said, you know, we've got amazing training programs, but if we don't address this, it's very difficult to, to help with this, right? Because here's the thing, when somebody says, hey, the diet is the problem, and then you get a diet book and you follow it, but you can't be consistent with it. Exercise the problem, you join a gym, and when you join a gym, you know, you're doing the training programs, the environment is great, but still you can't stick with it. Lifestyle with our sleep and stress. Now these are surface solutions, right? See, the two things that, you, that need to be a part of all these is this, being accountable to a program, so in our case, it's our Vigor Ground training program and, and precision nutrition uh, you know, program for, like I said, changing behavioral, uh, I would say, habits and, 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 like I said, emotional eating and things like that. And number two, being accountable to a person, which is a coach. Right? So that combination is crucial. So crucial, crucial, so that we're not constantly going to surface solutions, you know, trying to, and not realizing, like, well, but I tried this, but I tried this, but it didn't help, right? Because we got to address the emotional part of eating, right? And then we also have to be accountable to a program that works and accountable to a coach that works, right? And the thing is, like, this is all, you know, it, I wish I was so smart that it was just, like, I've thought of all this, and it's not my opinion. It's, 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 these are, this is data, and these are, you know, pretty much uh, research that has found, like, that we didn't do on thousands of people, but that Precision Nutrition has. So, you know, take all of this into account, and, um, you know, you will put it this way, you will see more change plugging in this than you will go into the new diet, right? Preparation is also a humongous part of all this, but hey, just, you know, just going through this and start to become aware of it uh, will help you significantly. So I know that was not a short Ask Luca, but hey, you know what? I'm here to like really talk about things that, that matter, that are actually going to change something, and not just like, hey, here's this quick tip that sounds good, but it's a surface solution, right? Want deep solutions that actually make an impact and make a change. So that's today's Ask Luca. I'll be back with more of your questions, and, uh, and um, I love you.